Now, my first run, you'll be able to resonate because it was an absolute catastrophe. I made all the mistakes a new runner would make. And I'll get to that in a second. Now we have the seagull on the way to goal. Lee Grantham from Örebro AIK. So, a warm mottagande and on the way to goal. 33 and 20 is But less than 22 months later, here's me winning my first ever race in Sweden at 10 km. And this would take me on a wild journey for the next years to represent my country in ultra distance and marathon. But the reason I got to, okay, I want to run, I want to start running again, was I'd been cycle touring in Asia for 11, 12 months. And on the last leg, or one of the major last legs from Bangkok to Singapore, 2,200 kilometers, what happens when you're cycle touring is you're out there on your own for eight, 10, 12, sometimes 14 hours a day, just trying to reach the next village and find a hotel. Hopefully there is a hostel or a hotel there. Sometimes it costs you a dollar, sometimes it's five dollars, sometimes it's ten dollars and it's absolute luxury. It's a massive adventure, but the best part about it is you're in your own head and thoughts all the time for months and a year at a time, which is incredibly powerful. And what happens is you start to ask yourself the same questions. Am I happy? Am I on the right path? Am I doing what I was put on this earth to do? However spiritual or religious you want to kind of look at this, what happens is you start to get very, very similar answers back. And the answer that I was getting was, although I love what I'm doing in an office, it's not feeding my soul. And what really feeds my soul is me getting on the bike first thing in the morning at the crack of dawn, and cycling all day long and using my body and getting fit, which is exactly what I did as a kid when I was just playing sport, whether it's football, rugby, running, everything you can think of. That's what I spent my days doing. So it fell, I felt at home and I felt on the right path. And so when I was on this final leg from Bangkok to Singapore, I decided that I was going to start running again and see where I could take it. And so Naturally, I thought, I've got all this endurance. I'm going to go out for an hour run. It's going to be quite comfortable. If I can cycle for 12, 14 hours, I can quite easily run for an hour. And I put my shorts on. I put my shoes on. I had the right shoes. I remember these Asics Gel Nimbus or something that I'd bought, and they were perfect for the run that I was trying to do. So it wasn't an equipment issue. It was me not warming up going out too fast, not understanding pacing, then having some kind of issue with my quad, but my lungs were on fire, my heart was beating through my ch chest. And what I realized is all that cycling fitness, all that aerobic base, I could put it to work, but it wasn't crossed over yet into making me a runner, and I needed to build that. So when I went out, I lasted 400 meters, no more than 400 meters, and started walking back to the house. And I remember saying to somebody who lived next to me, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a professional runner. But I just told them what, how badly it had gone compared to, you know, the cycling and how difficult it was. And, and, but this is what I wanted to do. And it lit a fire so, so, so bright inside that I, I just needed to understand how I could get better and how I could turn this into a full-time gig and become a professional runner. And so I needed to wait a couple of days because I'd done something with my quad. I'd probably just micro the quad and it was an issue, but I needed to wait a couple of days. And then I researched online, what do I need to do in order to sort of start running? And it was essentially insert the habit. So I started to run really, really slowly. And looking back, it was too quick. But for me, it was slow because I felt that I could, it was comfortable enough for me to hold it. And I started to insert the habit. And I would alternate days between cycling and running and run as much as I could. But then I also started, because it was hot and it was in Thailand, I started working on the treadmill. So I go to the treadmill. It was very exciting for me because I didn't have a Garmin or I didn't have anything that was tracking my pace. So all of a sudden, I could see how fast I was running. And then I remember sending a Facebook message, which I'll try and find, a Facebook message to somebody who ran for the running club that I used to run for when I was a kid, East Cheshire Harriers, 
and asking, this is probably after two or three weeks training, no more. I remember asking, what's a good time for 10K? So I had it in my mind that I wanted to be a good 10K runner and, and be able to run a good 10K, be fast at that, and I knew that to do that, I'd need to be fast at the 5K or get my time down for the 5K and then go. And I had no times so far. For, so everything was improvement. Everything was a personal best. And what he wrote back, I think it was Gavin Brown or his brother Liam, and he said 34 minutes is a good club runner. And so I had this idea in my head, okay, 34 minutes, break that down into kilometers, that's 320 per kilometer, which means 1640 for 5K. And I was far away from that. But for me, you're in this progress curve that's like the banana zone to begin with. So everything you do is moving you forward. And that's both great because it's extremely motivating and that initial motivation, you're seeing progress and you're in this positive feedback loop. It's, already, it's also incredibly dangerous because if you take a new runner, no matter what their background, sporting or not, and you get them to do whatever, they will move forward. And then what they will associate with that training, however good or bad that training was, they will associate that with good training that moves them forward, which may be so far away from optimal, but they're not considering that because it works. And that's where I was. So I was going to the treadmill three times a week and I was running outside once or twice a week because it was so hot. And I was, move I was still cycling, so I was still moving my aerobic base forward. And then I was trying to run as fast as I could once a week on the treadmill and trying to get towards, first of all, I remember it was like 13 kilometers an hour, then 14 kilometers an hour, then 15 kilometers an hour. And then I was thinking, if I could just hold what I can run for a kilometer, 15 kilometers per hour for one kilometer for four minutes, if I can do that, I can run a 20 minute 5K. So what I was doing is I was constantly, every week, trying to get faster, which is a key mistake that I see from a lot of people, especially people who are doing a lot of park runs or 5Ks, and they can go out there, they feel fresh enough to go and race all out 5K at the weekend and then try to improve. And what happens is you get to 21 minutes and then maybe 20.50 and then the next week 21.20, and then you're kind of playing around because essentially you're at a plateau because you're not letting the training soak in. But that's exactly what I was doing. And I was doing it with 1K. I was doing it then with 1500 meters, with 2K. And eventually I got to a point very, very slowly, which took way longer than it should based on what I know now. I got to a point where I could hold four minutes per kilometer for 3K. So the thing that I was doing right is I was doing the running. I, I was inserting the habit and that was pretty much hardwired. I was completely obsessed with running and performance and getting faster. And I was supplementing the bicycle and implementing that as part of the aerobic base and that was feeding in nicely. I was going way too hard on the bike based on what I know now and I was going way too hard too quickly when I was running. But the habit was hardwired, which is the most important part. I also wasn't considering power to weight ratio. So I was still lifting in the gym as though I was a rugby player or a football player or a cyclist, which is what I'd done in the recent past. And then all of a sudden what happened was I got a message on Facebook off a friend of mine who was getting married, a close friend from school, so I couldn't miss it. And this was 12 months, 12 and a half months into my sort of life in Thailand as a base and cycling around Southeast Asia. And initially, that trip was meant to be six weeks. Basically six weeks traveling around Southeast Asia and then back to work and then going at it. And that had been extended to three months and then maybe six months. And then it was indefinite because I'd gone from office boy, product of his environment in Manchester, focused on everything a young man is focused on, making money, going to fancy places, clothes, cars, etc., to hippie, runner, cyclist, explorer, adventurer. And, and when you go out in Thailand with two to five dollars in your pocket and you can, you've got enough calories from the, the nearest 7-Eleven or mom and pop store, that's... In, it just like it being a child and playing out in the woods with your friends and just being out all day and thinking that this ne never needs to end because it's so fun and exciting. 
But that invitation brought me back to the UK. And what that did is I went to the wedding and I kind of like, you know, saw a completely different life that everybody else had been living in the last 12 months. And I, ch I definitely changed in that year. But what it got for me is it, I was able to run a park run. And so I ran a park run and I, I was still training on a treadmill fast because that's what I was used to. I remember doing that in South Manchester. And then I remember going to South Manchester park run and running 1830. And that was way faster than I'd been able to do it on a treadmill. And that's often the case. Sometimes the treadmill can feel fast for you. Sometimes it can feel slow for you. It definitely helped me out being able to compete with other people and really going for it and giving my all because of my sports background. So I ran 18.30, I think I came fifth or sixth. And then three weeks later, I went for it. I implemented more training. I knew what I needed to work on my weaknesses. And I ran 16.30 and came first. And it's park run, so it's not an official win, and I don't take it like that. But all of a sudden, I'm like, wow, I, you know, this is a, a crazy progress in five months. This is exactly what I want to do. And so I signed up, or I bought a ticket from a friend of mine that was selling Bupa Manchester 10K run. So after those park runs, I moved back to Sweden. And very close to where I live, just an hour away, was one of the biggest running clubs in Sweden. And so I joined that running club, which 400 members at the time, I think it must be at least double now, it was growing rapidly. And what that gave me was structure, but also the access to competition. It was much faster runners than me. And so I was competing with guys at my level and above, and that sort of really fed where I needed to be and what I needed to do in order to get there. And we were doing that structure and it was very ad hoc. It wouldn't be what I would do now, but it was giving me the intervals. It was giving me the speed work and it was also giving me the long run. And so I fed off that knowledge and built upon that. Once we got out of the winter and it's harsh in Sweden, where I was living, it was between zero and minus 35 for a good period of sort of two, three months and, you know, an extended winter of five months. And it gets to the point where when you go out and do a run, you can't breathe in too deeply because you kind of freeze your lungs or it'll have, it'll be painful. Um, it's kind of like frostbite on your fingers. So I was running in those conditions. But once we got out, then I started to race. And again, I could see exactly where I was, but I was making new boy mistakes. And so it took me some time over the spring, summer, and then into the autumn. And as we hit October, things started to get into place and I started to get some decent results. And I always had in my mind that I want to run less than 34 minutes. I want to run a good 10K time, which is what I'd been told in, in 2010. And so, and I had in my mind 1640, which is 320 per kilometer, and then 320 per kilometer for 10K is 3320. And then I actually ran a 10K in 33 minutes and 27 seconds, which was nearly there, but it was like there was a bit of grass, there was a bit of trail, it wasn't necessarily a fast course, but I won the race. And it was all the feelings that I had from being a kid, winning cross country races and track and field races, they all came back and I was like, ah, okay, I'm, I could be good at this. If I really focus, I could be good at it. So I was still working, I was still working a full-time job, and this, but this was taking up all my heart, it was taking up all my thoughts, completely obsessed with running and trying to get better, and still having to fight off all the negativity around, it's way too late for you to get back into running, you know, you're overweight, you're too muscular, um, what are you going to do? How are you going to be able to turn into, into a career? But in my mind, I was, I am going to be a professional runner, no matter what it takes. And that's the thinking that I had. So it was the mentality of going out for a run and not being able to run for 400 meters, which I often say that, but I say that to show you that your starting point is probably better than mine was. To thinking a, bit, a little bit about it, starting to sort of implement or hardwire the habit. Once you've built that, ha that, that habit and it's constantly part of your week and it's what you think about first thing in the morning when you wake up because your kit is laid out the night before, things get very, very simple then because then 
all of a sudden, join a club, get some structure, run fast, run far, run easy. A lot of my stuff was wrong. I was running a lot in the gray zone. And so, and I was run, running, I was trying to run t fast too frequently. And so I was taking steps forward. And again, you're in, you're going to move forward because you're inserting running for the first time. Or again, you're re inserting running. And therefore, you're going to move forward no matter what you do. So you may as well move forward optimally and work with somebody who really knows what they're doing. But I got to a point where I thought, right, if I can tap into the right knowledge now, I can really fly. And this definitely can work. And so not only was I was in the positive flywheel, but I had complete belief, or that had been reaffirmed, that I could be a good marathon runner and I could run for my country. And that's exactly what happened.